PDL1 is an important marker of various cancers. PDL1 expression helps tumor cells evade immune cell attack, enabling them to grow and spread unchecked. For that reason, testing for PDL1 expression is one way to screen patients for anti PDL1 cancer therapies. The problem is that there are currently four FDA approved assays for doing just that, each with its own set of PDL1 seeking antibodies and scoring systems. To reduce confusion among patients and physicians, researchers have adapted a digital system for mapping and quantifying biomarkers in tissue to the assessment of PDL1 expression. Preliminary results suggest that with some refinements, this profiling system could simplify and standardize PDL1 assessment among patients with cancer. Digital Spatial Profiling, or DSP, works by flooding tissue samples with up to dozens of different antibodies, each targeting a unique cellular compartment or function. Attached to each antibody is a matching molecular probe that is cleaved when zapped with an ultraviolet laser. The tiny molecular tags are then siphoned out and analyzed, and the result is a detailed, quantitative map of antibody interactions across different tissue structures. The team behind the current study tested DSP against the two methods currently used to screen for PDL1 expression immunofluorescence and immunohistochemistry. They performed experiments on samples from 10 cell lines organized across a tissue microarray. The cell lines expressed negative, weak, intermediate, or high levels of PDL1. The team observed high correlations between the results obtained by DSP and those obtained by immunofluorescence as well as between the DSP and immunochemistry results. They also observed high reproducibility of the DSP results between rows on a single microarray and between whole experiments conducted on two different arrays. What's more, reproducibility remained high even when rows were sampled one week apart. While DSP is not quite ready for use in the clinic, Reaching this level of consistency with tried and true methods of measuring PDL1 and between different DSP samples is an important benchmark. Maintaining such performance, especially with more complex tissue samples, could give DSP the potential to become a standard method of assessing patients with cancer for PDL1.